Today I'm going to answer a question from a student by the name of uh, uh, that. And this question is on the video about the need for the Zener diode in the linear power supply. And the question is, isn't the Zener there primarily to clamp the voltage from going above 12 volts, not to make up for a drop in voltage due to more load? And I think I understand where you're coming from. We might be talking apples and oranges here. Let me just talk about where I think you're coming from. So the idea is that in the regulator, I'm just going to do the part of the circuit near the Zener diode. We have a current controlling resistor and a Zener diode. We'll make it a 12 volt Zener. And whether this is a shunt regulator or a series regulator, in which case it will go to a transistor, which I'll go ahead and draw here. The fact is, the voltage across the Zener diode can go below 12 volts. The Zener diode will change its resistance to whatever it takes to make the voltage across it 12 volts. But if we don't have 12 volts to start with, we can't get 12 volts across the Zener. So if we have less than 12 volts, we're going to have less than 12 volts across the Zener. But once this reaches 12 volts, now this goes above 12 volts, this will remain at 12 volts. That will clamp the voltage there. So I see where you're talking about uh, clamping the voltage. Yes, it will clamp the voltage at 12 volts, but not to make up for a drop in voltage due to more load. Well, that's where we have the overhead here. Let's put some realistic voltage here, like let's make it 18 volts, a common voltage with a 12 volt uh, transformer for the power supply. So we have a six volt overhead between the voltage of the Zener diode and the 18 volts. And this overhead is what makes up for the voltage drop on the load. So I'll draw the load over here. Remember the load is whatever circuit is being fed by the power supply. We just represent that as a resistor. I like to put a variable resistor there because loads tend to vary in their impedance, meaning they need different amounts of current. So as I make this less and less resistance that makes more and more of a load, it's going to pull the voltage down further. Remember, there's a certain amount of impedance over in this part of the circuit. I'll represent with a resistor there. And so as we pull current through that resistor, what's going to happen? Let's say we have 18 volts here. As we pull more and more current, we get more voltage across that. Remember, resistance plus current equals voltage. So we get a voltage difference. It's always going to be higher where conventional current goes in and lower where it comes out. So this is pretty much locked at 18 volts. This represents the impedance of the transformer and the rectifier and all of that circuit. And so as we pull current through that impedance, we're going to get a voltage difference and it's going to be lower here, pretty much locked at 18 volts here. So it's gonna get lower and lower and lower. So the more current we pull through the load, the lower this is going to be. And so it's this voltage here, the overhead, that makes up for the drop in the voltage due to the load. And of course, what we're going to have here, let's say, let's make this 12.7 volts, just because it makes numbers easy, because what happens here, we're going to lose approximately 0.7 volts, leaving us with 12 volts here, easy peasy, 12 volt regulator, not the best regulator, but it will do the job if you don't have to have precision regulation. So there's a quick regulator. And so once again, yes, this does clamp the voltage, from going above 12.7. So you have a good way of putting it there. The overhead here is what makes up for the drop in the load. So as this goes down, the more current, the lower this will go, 18, 17, 16, 15. And when this finally gets down to 12 volts, that's the limit. Once we've used up our entire overhead, now if this goes below 12 volts, this is going to drop also because we no longer have enough voltage for the Zener diode to make up for. So anyway, yeah, good point. Uh, another way to put it, it's always a good way to look at things from one angle than another angle. And that's certainly a perfectly good valid angle. So I hope that answered your question and keep those questions coming. I answer as many as I have time for, and sometimes other people come along and answer them for me. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. 
If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.